I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about URL rewriting, responsive email, QR codes, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have an article on the 24 Ways blog called URL Rewriting for the Fearful. Now, if Go you ahead. don't know, 24 Ways publishes articles every December from December 1st to December 24th, and that's why it's called 24 Ways. They call it the Advent Calendar for Geeks. Pretty cool blog if you've never checked it out before. Successor to 23 Ways. Hmm. Hashtag obvi. So there's a, great email, um, there's a great article on here on URL rewriting for the fearful. Now, URL rewriting is, is the process of taking one URL and making it go to another spot. This can either be done by redirecting the user to a different web page or work on something behind the scenes. Now, this can be a really, really complicated process, but a lot of web applications use it. So there's a great article on here that goes over exactly everything you need to know to get started with URL rewriting. Now, the article goes over URL rewriting with Apache, but there's a converter in case you're using Nginx or another web server. So it's great. It goes through the basics of how to turn on URL rewriting. And then here is one of the most simple rewrite rules. If you want to go from one URL, make it go from here to another. And boom, you're good to go. Now, you can do this via redirect. So, hey, I've got an article that used to be in this one spot, and maybe I moved it around, and now it moves somewhere else. And then it shows you exactly what you need to do to make these works. Now, there's a couple different rewrite rules that you can use. You can do a temporary redirect, which is a 301, um, or a permanent, which is a 302, or possibly I just reversed those, but I'm sure we'll get told of that in the YouTube comments. Wonderful. Yeah, so anyway, this... Uh, <laughs> this guide has basically everything you need to know. So um, how do you go through and match all these patterns? Uh, what the patterns do? How am I matching letters and numbers? And then what to do behind the scenes? So one of the great things to do with URL rewriting, let's say you have uh, a PHP script that displays an article, and you do it based on the slug of an article. Well, if you're using URL rewriting, instead of using article.php and then a question mark and then maybe the word slug equals whatever, you can actually just make it go to a certain part of the website just by the URL. That's one of the big benefits of URL rewriting and this can get more and more complicated and cascade deeper and deeper until you've spent way too much time figuring it out. Luckily, there's this article which I really recommend reading to get all the ins and outs, especially if you've never approached this before. Great, great article. Very nice. Well. Next up is a site called My GitHub Resume. It basically takes any GitHub username and transforms it into, are you ready for it, a resume. I know, aptly named. So if we check out My GitHub Resume, you can go ahead and paste in or type in any GitHub username. And I happen to have one right here. He's the creator of the project, David. I'm gonna go ahead and click Generate and boom, we have a resume for David right here, and looks like he works at uh, Engine Yard. We got his GitHub profile and a couple of details about it, his blog, some of the languages that he uses on GitHub, and then some of his popular repositories. There's also some organizations that he's a member of, and then there's a little about this resume down at the bottom. But you can go ahead and email or print this resume, and this was actually inspired by a tweet from John Rezig, who is the creator of jQuery, where he said, when it comes to hiring, I'll take a GitHub commit log over a resume any day. So that... Uh, no, he didn't mean that as a cover sheet. Uh, I don't... He means instead of. Right, exactly. So uh, this, this basically is that project. It allows you to go ahead and just generate a resume based on your GitHub profile. Now, one caveat here is that in order to use this, you actually need to go to this project on GitHub and star the project, which signifies that you are okay with people generating a resume based on your GitHub profile um, using my GitHub resume. Uh, but uh, so, you know, really cool project, really cool idea. Yeah, yeah, really like it. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a library called 
Auto.js. This is a library for continually auto-suggesting things in a text area based on a dictionary. So really, really simple, actually. Here's a, here's a live demo. Nick, give me a word to type in, part of a word. Uh, banana. So look, I type in B, and it's, it's already auto-completing banana. Boom. If I want to fill it in, just press the right arrow key, good to go, and this works for um, so, so many different words. It comes installed with a regular dictionary, but I think you can change the dictionary if you want to. Um, there's a micro version that includes a basic dictionary, standard, and maximum. Uh, anyway, very, very easy to use. As you can see right here, this is just a couple lines of code, new auto-suggest control. Now, I wouldn't recommend this in every particular spot, but it could be really handy in different circumstances depending on the website that you're making. Anyway, check that out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse, or search for us in iTunes at The Treehouse Show. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm going to put that on every single text area I can. I'm sure that won't be annoying at all. Good idea. Yeah. Especially good for email address. Nice. Yeah. So next up is a project from Zurb, whom, of course, are the creators of Zurb Foundation, a popular front-end framework. This project is called Inc., and it's a framework for designing HTML emails, which, of course, is a notoriously difficult thing to do, especially if you want that email to work on a wide variety of email clients. They all render HTML slightly differently, and there's some older ones or some ones that aren't so good. Uh, Outlook is particularly bad for rendering HTML emails, but this framework allows you to do it a lot more easily. So let's go ahead and take a look at Ink. Look at that. They have this wonderful uh, illustration here with a little bit of animation, very cool homepage. Um, it says, email anywhere on any device. So... Uh, it gives you a uh, process, docs, inliner, and even a download. Look at that. Let's look at the process, though. That's uh, the interesting part here. First, it says to go ahead and test in Outlook. Uh, it says that Outlook is the most bullish of all email clients, so of course you want to make sure that it works there first before you move on to other email clients. Then you can go ahead and add your responsive style. So you can go ahead and make your your email responsive so that it works on a wide variety of screen resolutions. That's very cool. Then you can bring your styles in line and there's a special tool that they have there called Inky's Inliner that allows you to go ahead and do this. Again, email clients aren't that great at rendering HTML and CSS, so you do need to use a lot of inline styles, which is normally not recommended on the web, but in an email client, you do need to do it. It's about the only way you can do it. Pretty much. And then you can go ahead and test your email and send it out. So very cool stuff. There's a lot more here to explore in the documentation, and you should definitely go ahead and download it to check it out for yourself. But uh, I think this looks like a great project, and it's one that's really very much needed. Yeah, especially if you don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called qrcode.js. Now, we've all heard of QR codes before. You, you see them around. They're uh, little squares. Hold your phone up to it, and it can either go to a website or print out some information. Now, there's been programs to do that before, but Nick, what if I told you you could do that right in your web browser? What? what? That's impossible. It is not. It's totally possible. We're to show you how right now. Amazing. Yeah, amaze. Here's qrcode.js. Um, very, very easy to use. Look at that. We have one div with the ID of QR code. And then look at that. With one line of JavaScript, boom, we have generated a QR code. Um, now, there's a few different options that you can use. You can give it the text where you want it to go, width, height, and even colors. Once you do that, call the clear and make code. And then, boom, you get a QR code. Now, what's really great about this is it works on most web browsers. It works all the way back to IE6. So if you need to put QR codes on your site, go ahead, download qrcode.js and get QR coding. Wow, very QR, much code. Well, next up is a blog post from Chris Coyer over on CSX Tricks about the HTML5 meter element. Now, if we scroll down the page here, you can go ahead and see what the markup looks like for the meter element. As you would expect, it uses an opening and closing tags uh, that says meter. And then there's a, a couple of attributes that you can go ahead and apply to the meter element. Now, meter is very similar to the progress element. It basically allows you to create a little meter. So rather than look at a whole bunch of boring code, 
let's just look at this fun example instead. So you can go ahead and set a minimum and maximum for your meter. And then look at this, you can go ahead and mess around with the value. If we want it to be 0.3, boom, now it's 0.3. Want it to be 0.25, there you go. So pretty cool. Oh, looks like you can't do 0.25, that's okay. But uh, as you fill up the meter, it'll go ahead and change colors. So that's pretty cool. You can also do OS X style disk usage. So with some additional styling, you can go ahead and create something that looks like this. So you can go ahead and create gauges or meters, I guess, that look like they're created in OS X with a bunch of different coloring. You can also go ahead and animate these things. So if we go ahead and hover over, oh, I thought there was an example here, maybe not, but anyway, you can go ahead and animate these. So for example, you could have animated stripes in the background uh, and all sorts of cool stuff. So very, very cool article. And uh, you know, there's a lot of attributes to play with here uh, that allow you to create meters right in your HTML without any JavaScript. Yeah. Pretty cool. And that's wonderful. You know, it's always good to stay on top of the new HTML5 elements anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so next up, we have a project called Prism. Prism is a set of JavaScript and CSS that does syntax highlighting for your web pages. Uh, this is going to be really useful if you have a blog where you need to demonstrate some code or, or something like that. Uh, as you would expect, it is extremely easy to use. Here is an example right here of the Prism source code highlighted with Prism, and as they say, don't you just love how meta this is? Yes, we do, website. We love how meta that is. Um, and as I said, it's extremely easy to use there and has a ton of features. So here is the basic usage. You just include the style sheet and the JavaScript, and then you are ready to do some syntax highlighting. How do you do it? Well, it's really, really easy. You wrap your code in a pre-tag, and then you add a code tag with a class of the language and a hyphen, and the language you want to use. In this case, it is CSS. Now, um, Prism has a bunch of different plugins that support line numbers and just a lot of different options that you might want to have when syntax highlighting. It looks like you can also adjust the theme, <coughs> which is pretty nice as well. Yeah, uh, have, it, have it match your web page. Mm -hmm. It doesn't support IE 6 through 8, so if you do need to target those browsers, it might not be the best choice, but if you're using more modern browsers, this is a really, really great choice for syntax highlighting. Yeah, uh, oh, that's very nice. It's notoriously difficult to do syntax highlighting, so yeah, really cool solution. Well, next up is some section separators over on the CodeDrops blog. So here we have a couple of different sections of HTML. So here's uh, you know this lighter blue area and this darker blue area. And we have this little triangle separating them. If we scroll down the page, you can see we have an upside down triangle. We have this kind of diagonal line running across, this little circle looks almost like a puzzle piece. That's kind of neat. That larger triangle, this nice big curve. So lots of different nice section separators, which is a, a pretty common design pattern that you're seeing on a lot of websites these days that are kind of long, scrolly websites that are one page and you kind of just scroll down the page looking at each new section. So it's nice to have some variance between each one of those sections. If we go ahead and go to the code drops article. Here you can go ahead and see exactly how it was done with some HTML and CSS code. And it looks like they're even using an SVG for uh, some of those section separators. But uh, pretty cool stuff and very nice examples of how you can go ahead and separate those sections. And if you want to know how to code some of those, we've gone over that on previous episodes of The Treehouse Show. Mm -hmm. Not to toot our own horn or anything, huh? I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talk about, head on over to the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Search for us on iTunes at the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.
And in five, four. I'm about to yawn. <laughs> She's so excited about the show. <sighs> That's going to be a gift. Oh, that's my line. Okay. I'm Nick Edit. <laughs> three, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> three, two. I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason. That's <laughs> <laughs> the one. And Feel in good. Five, four. I'm Nick Pettit. <laughs> I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pinch myself or something. Okay. <clears throat> I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. Can we just use another intro from like a previous episode? The, the most previous episode. <clears throat> okay, right. I think it's out. I think it's out. Okay, let's do it.